Hello, what's YouTube? up, YouTube? Welcome to another installment of the friggin' sweetest show on YouTube. What's up, YouTube and fellow Mustang enthusiasts? In this video, we'll be installing the remaining parts in stage two. The ones you see right here on this table. So this is a pretty exciting episode for me because we're effectively completing stage two by installing the remaining bolt-ons. With the exception of the custom dyno tune, which will be included in the next video alongside power numbers, acceleration numbers, and just general conversation of how the car feels compared to stage one. For those of you that are new here, I'm in the process of building up my 2007 Mustang GT there to put down at least a 700 wheel horsepower. And to do this, I've broken up the build into stages. So what's been done to the car, well, what will be done to the car is all included in a Google Sheet down below in the description. If you're interested in that type of information, be sure to check that out. Okay, I know most of you already know that, so let's talk about the parts we'll be installing today. Of course, we have here Ford Racing's intake manifold paired with Ford Racing's twin 62 millimeter throttle body. Then we have the absolutely gorgeous Ford Racing valve covers that I just had to have. I think they look amazing and I'm super stoked to get them on the car. And then we have MSD's coil-on plugs that will probably give me like 2.5 horsepower, but they sure look cool. They, you know, they go well with the red, right? Uh, now look, I might know my way around a computer pretty well, but when it comes to vehicles, not so much. I'm basically just gonna start taking apart the top of the engine and hope for the best. We'll start with the valve covers and then we'll just work our way back up to the intake manifold because we gotta take all that stuff anyway to get to the valve covers. I'll do my best to document the steps as I go through the install, but let me emphasize that my mechanic experience pretty much ends at oil changes, fixing flat tires, and cold air intakes. Anyway, that's enough chit chat, let's get started. Disconnect the fuel pump driver module and the spare tire compartment of the trunk. Start the car and let it run until it dies. In my case, the car wasn't even able to start. Disconnect the negative battery connection. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor from the intake. Disconnect the PCV tube from the intake elbow on the passenger side. Loosen the clamps holding the intake to the throttle body. Remove the 10 mm bolts that hold the airbox to the fender apron. Remove the entire intake from the engine bay. Disconnect all electrical connections on the driver's side, including connections to the fuel injectors and plugs. Remove the PCV tube that connects the valve cover to the intake manifold. On the passenger side, disconnect the throttle position sensor by pulling the red latch back and pressing down on the tang. Remove the evac line from the intake manifold by pressing firmly on the plastic ring. Place some paper towels or rags under the fuel connection line to catch any fuel that leaks out. Use a fuel line removal tool to disconnect the fuel line from the rail. So to remove the fuel line, you need a special fuel line removal tool. Put it over this and then push it into this spring here and pull the fuel off. I don't have that tool and I'm not at home, so I had to get really creative and use two plastic forks and stick it in the fuel line. My point is, if you try to do this, go to AutoZone and buy that little piece of plastic and save yourself like 30 minutes of a headache. Okay, continuing on. Remove the coil-on plugs with a seven millimeter socket. Ran into another problem. The four of the plug bolts are pretty much stripped. I mean, this is how it was just about when I tried it the first time. It just rolls over. I'm gonna just try to remove the whole valve cover with the plug still on it and try to just wiggle them out. Anyway, I'm gonna continue on and see how far I can get before I have to call a tow truck. 
Now disconnect all electrical connections on the passenger side. Remove the coil on plugs with a 7mm socket. Some of the plugs may be pretty stubborn. Try rotating back and forth while pooling. Remove the PCV tube that was connected to the intake from the valve cover. Disconnect the charge motion control valve from behind the intake manifold. We won't be reconnecting this because our new manifold does not have charge motion plates. Detach the cable bundles from the fuel rail bolts on the passenger side. Remove the fuel rail bolts with an 8mm socket. Disconnect the vac line above the fuel rail on the driver's side. Remove the driver's side fuel rail bolts. Do your best to tuck and zip tie electrical lines out of the way. I didn't do a great job of this and they were constantly getting in the way, especially when trying to remove the valve covers. Remove the 10mm bolts from the intake manifold. There are four on each side, two of which are pretty well hidden behind the manifold. There are also two bolts in the center that are easily missed. Unfasten the electrical bundle from behind the intake manifold on the passenger side. Back on the driver's side, disconnect the large vacuum hose from behind the intake manifold. You should now be able to remove the stock intake manifold from the engine. Take some time to carefully clean around the intake ports on the heads. You probably won't be back in here for a while, so this is a good opportunity to remove debris. Once you're done cleaning, cover the intake holes with masking tape. Use compressed air to blow away any debris, especially around the inner side of the valve covers. Loosen the driver's side valve cover bolts with an 8mm socket. I highly recommend having power tools because doing this by hand is tedious. Remove the driver's side valve cover. Remove the valve cover gasket, but be sure to clean up any debris that could fall into the valve train first. Carefully scrape away the old RTV from the head on both sides of the phaser. Now apply fresh RTV. Carefully place the valve cover on the head. Tighten the valve cover bolts with an 8mm socket to 89 inch pounds. Although I had a torque wrench, I didn't have a socket adapter. I had to re-tighten all the bolts the next day when the bolts were much more difficult to reach. Now loosen the valve cover bolts with an 8mm socket on the passenger side. Remove the valve cover. Just like we did on the driver's side, remove the gasket, RTV, and thoroughly clean the top of the head. Place and bolt the passenger side valve cover. Tighten the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Remove the oil neck from the stock intake valve cover by lifting the tab and rotating the neck counterclockwise. Although it looks easy in this video, it actually took quite a bit of force to get the neck to come loose. Install the oil neck on the new valve cover by rotating it clockwise. Cut the fuel crossover off the nipples of the fuel rails. This part sketched me out because cutting is irreversible, but feel free to destroy the crossover line because we won't be reusing it. And have a bowl ready to pour the fuel into. Bend the tab of the alternator mount to a little less than 45 degrees. The provided instructions also call for enlarging the smaller of the two holes so we can move the fastener half an inch, but I skipped that part because it was 3 a.m. and didn't seem necessary. Place the provided fuel crossover line through the middle of the new intake manifold. Make sure the green marks end up on the driver's side when the manifold is installed. This is also a good time to install the dress-up bolts on the manifold. I didn't realize until later when I was cleaning up that I forgot to do this. Remove the tape covering the intake holes. Place the new intake manifold on the heads. Install the two inner bolts first, but do not tighten. You'll have to fight with the crossover line a bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. Add a bit of fresh oil to the bolts before installing. Torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds in the recommended pattern. Apply a bit of fresh oil to the injector O-rings. Connect the driver's side fuel rail nipple to the crossover line, but be sure to slip the small clamp over the nipple first. It was kind of difficult to get the hose fully over the nipple.
Reinstall the two fuel rail bolts with an 8mm socket. Repeat this process on the passenger side. Install the provided vacuum line nozzles to the driver side of the intake manifold. Bolt the throttle body to the intake manifold and torque to 70 inch pounds. Install the coil on plugs with a 7mm socket. Reconnect all electrical connections and vacuum lines on the driver side, and don't forget to reconnect the fuel line like I did. Notice the PCV tube that connects the valve cover to the intake manifold is now too long. Roll back the rubber sheath and cut out about 1.5 inches of the inner tube. Snip off some of the sheath and insert the sawed off connection. The tube should now fit. Reconnect all electrical connections and vacuum lines on the passenger side. Install the coupling that attaches the throttle body to the intake elbow and hook up the intake. Bolt the air box to the fender apron with a 10 mm socket. Reconnect the mass airflow sensor. Reconnect the PCV tube that connects the intake elbow to the valve cover on the passenger side. Reconnect the negative battery connection and the fuel pump driver module in the trunk. This is a good time to double check all connections, especially the fuel line. Okay, that's it. Let's load the new tune. Five percent. Ninety percent.